Okay, I want to start. We'll get started on introductions, and then we're going to um, jump right into this this evening. Um, I want to first welcome everybody to um, CTIM's webinar. It's our first webinar starting the first of the year, and we're excited to be presenting uh, Lewis Tickety. Um, met Zachary Collins actually through AACT and um, found out that he was from Holland, Michigan. And I had a conversation about, well, we should be presenting a Michigan company for ticketing for the Michigan organization. So Zachary founded, I believe, Lutus in 2016, and they have over a thousand uh, performing arts and of all different sizes, shapes, Colors, um, doing ticketing, marketing, patron management, fundraising, and much more. So we are going to turn this over to um, Zach tonight and have him do a presentation. And what I would suggest is write down your questions as he goes along, because probably he may be um, answering some of those mm -hmm. during his presentation. But at the end, we're going to leave about 10, 15 minutes so that if you have questions, we can do that. And if you do have questions that you think of near the end, go ahead and put them right in the Q&A section so that we have them written down. And then we will fire those off to Zachary as we get finished. So. Zach, I'm going to let you go right ahead. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you for the great introduction, Mary Jo. Um, so like uh, she said, I'm Zachary Collins with Lutus. I'm the co-founder and CEO. Um, so to first start off, give you a, a brief background on who we are as a company. Um, Lutus started as a side project for a theater director in Holland, Michigan, who needed an easier way of selling tickets online. So uh, we started developing Ludus, and it went really, really well. The show went well, and ticket sales went well, and other directors came knocking on the door wanting to use what eventually became Ludus. And uh, now we work with over, as Mary Jo said, over a thousand performing arts organizations across the U.S., um, from 50-seat playhouses to 2,000-plus-seat performing arts centers and everywhere in between. Um, and that same theater director is also our president at Ludus. So we truly have the performing arts in our DNA. What I'll do here, um, let me share my screen really quick. Here we go. I'll turn off, make sure my notifications are paused. Let me pull up this slide that I have. Um, so what I'd like to do first is kind of just go over what to look for in a ticketing system before we just jump into Ludus. And so if you've been looking for a ticketing system or you've looked for a ticketing system in the past, you'll know that the ticketing market is very saturated and there are hundreds, if not thousands of different options to choose from. And everybody offers their own little thing, um, but there are specific things that you should really look for when it comes to a ticketing system. And what I did here is I narrowed it down to four key factors. The first one being tools that help you support your patrons. So that starts with easy ticket buying online for your patrons. So that means the ability for them to quickly go online, select their seats, enter their information, uh, no passwords that they have to remember every single time they want to buy tickets, um, the ability for them to easily print tickets at home or receive digital tickets on their mobile device, and then uh, also lastly, mobile optimization. So something that they can actually use on their phone and easily buy tickets on their mobile device now that we are in a mobile first society. On the selling side of things, um, on your side of things at the box office, you also need really easy tools so you can quickly and easily sell those tickets in person at your box office. So instead of having long box office lines being held up by your ticketing system, you need something that really supports your in-person sales. The other part of that is the ability to quickly issue refunds and exchanges um, that really line up with your policies. So the ability to quickly do those things in just a few clicks of a button. And then lastly here, real-time reporting and data. So everything in your ticketing system should be real-time. There should be no delays. As soon as people buy tickets or they make a donation, whatever it may be, your report should update in real-time. Next, we have pricing. So pricing, uh, ticketing systems don't have to break your budget. They don't have to be expensive. In fact, they can be 100% free to your organization. So look for systems that don't have annual fees or hidden charges. Look for ones that don't have ticket master fees. And we all know what I'm talking about. There shouldn't be $10 fees on a $20 ticket. And lastly, you shouldn't have to pay for great support. There should not be a support package. It should just come included with the system. Next, we have friendly 
proactive and crazy fast support. Ensure that there's always a human to speak with, whether that's while you're setting things up or 10 minutes before curtain. You want to ensure that you always have that true support from an actual human and not just a, a robot that answers you with some uh, links to some help articles. And you also want to look for multiple channels. So live chat, phone support, email, whatever really works best for you when it comes to getting support. And lastly, our, our fourth factor here is something that can go beyond ticketing. So think of um, other tools like marketing tools and fundraising tools, patron management, streaming like live streams and uh, pre-recorded productions if you're still doing those. The, the ability to embed Ludus right into your own website, or I'm sorry, ticketing systems right into your own website, like what Ludus can do. Um, so you can keep patrons right on your own websites. And then also COVID safety tools to really help you um, in a COVID world. So that's where Ludus comes in. Um, so we do um, you know, focus on all the above and so much more. Our main focus is to really make life easier for you and your patrons. So what I'll do is I'll exit out of this slideshow here and we'll jump over to the actual product we'll where I'll walk you through Ludus and show you everything that we have to offer. So here, what we're looking at is the Ludus admin panel. And this is where all the magic happens. This is where you manage your ticket sales, generate reports, look up patron orders, um, add in all of your shows, really anything that you can think of when it comes to managing your ticket sales and beyond, you can do so within your Ludus admin panel here. What I'll do is first walk through the different tabs and features that we have to offer. And then we can actually walk through adding in a show, um, going through what the selling process looks like for you as an admin or a box office seller, and also what it looks like for your patrons to actually buy tickets online. And then we can go over pricing and any other questions that you may have uh, toward the end. So looking at the shows page here, this is where your shows live. Now you can post one show at a time, or if you have an entire season, you can post your entire season here. This is where you manage those ticket sales. So you manage the pricing, you can generate those reports. You can sell tickets to a specific performance, whatever it may be, you can do so here on that shows page here. But before I dive into this page, let's just walk through a few other tabs that we have, and then we can get back to this page and add in the show. Up here, we have collections. So collections is a way to collect payments for things beyond ticket sales. So think of member dues, uh, summer workshop registrations, venue rentals, really anything that you can think of, you can do so through the collections feature. And so if you wanna set up a collection, it's included right in your Ludus account, you can click add collection, and this will walk you through the collection creation process. And so we can enter the collection information. We can enter the fees that we want to collect online from our payers. We can upload files for the payers to download after they make their payment. But most importantly, we can collect whatever information we need from the payer. And so if we were doing like a summer workshop and we wanted to collect additional information like what topics are you interested in or how did you hear about us? You can do that through the forms feature here using the drag and drop form builder. And so when a payer makes their payments, we compile all that information, including the fees that they paid and the answers to their questions into a real-time submissions report that you can access at any time. Under fundraising here and donations, there are two different ways that patrons can go about making a donation to your organization. So number one, they can make a donation at checkout when they're buying tickets, or they can make a donation at any time via the donate tab on your ticketing page. And you can also utilize categories. So if you wanted patrons to donate towards certain things, like here we have like a star fundraiser or we have our theater renovation, patrons can choose to donate and make their donation toward those certain categories. And then we help you generate reports and issue money based on those different categories. Under marketing here, so we do have a built-in marketing feature that allows you to do mass marketing campaigns with drag and drop emails and custom targeted audiences. So if I pull up our fall show announcement, for example, here I have our basic campaign information. I entered a subject line for the email, but most importantly, I can use the email designer to create a beautiful looking email. So I can drop in different elements into the email here. I can drag things around, add in our logo, really match our brand. I can even drop in merge tags to really customize and personalize the email to each patron. 
And it also looks great on mobile. So you give a great experience to your patrons from the very beginning. Down here under scheduling, you can immediately send the email or you can set a custom date for the email to go out at a specific time. But my favorite part of marketing is the audiences feature here. So every single time a patron interacts with your Ludus, so they buy a ticket, they make a donation, they register for something through collections, we start building a profile on that patron using that sales data. So using that data, we can create custom targeted audiences based on those patrons. So for example, if I wanted a list of just people who have donated to our organization, I can generate that here using a custom audience rule for number of donations. Under the audience rule drop down here, I can also target based on total spent on tickets, um, additional items purchased, pass holders, um, their shows attended, or I can create custom patron tags like VIP or donor and attach those to patron profiles. And when you're creating those marketing campaigns, you can choose to send to all of your patrons or you can choose to send to tar specific targeted audiences. Up here under reports, I'll go into more detail once we actually sell some tickets, but everything in Ludus is real time. So your reports update in real time. You have access to your summary report. This is like a financial report. And so this gives you a grand overview of everything about your sales. Your revenue report is your day by day, week by week, grand total of your sales. And your orders report is like a spreadsheet in your browser. So you can really dive into your data. You can sort the data, group the data, whatever you really need to do to summarize and understand your sales data. And most importantly, you can always export your data at any time because you own your data in Ludus. Under more, we have seating charts. So we have a drag and drop seating chart maker that allows you to build your spaces and your auditoriums yourself. And so here we can drop in sections, we can drag things around, we can take seats out if needed. We can also do table seating. So if you wanted to create a space with table seating, like you were doing a dinner show, for example, we can drop in a table here and do table seating here, and patrons can choose their, um, their seats at the specific tables. You can also utilize um, the tiered pricing. So if you want to charge for uh, different pricing for different parts of your space, you can also do that through the tiered pricing feature. Another great thing to know about the seating charts is that you can have as many different copies and variations as you'd like of your different spaces. And you can reuse the same exact seating chart year to year without having to recreate it every time. Now, of course, if you get to this point and you're like, I don't have time to build a seating chart, all we need is some sort of label diagram to go off of and we can build it for you free of charge. Under more here, we also have passes. So if you do anything like season passes or flex passes, we have that built right into Ludus. And so your patrons can go online and buy their pass. Now there are two different ways you can go about passes. One, each pass holder can receive a code that they use throughout the season to unlock shows and apply their pass toward tickets. Or you can make it so they simply just get all their tickets ahead of time, more like a, a typical um, classic season pass. So that's there for you, you can utilize it. Um, you can you know, set up your shows and then set up their passes or edit the passes throughout the season. Under forms here, so we also have, um, like I showed you in collections, you can also create custom forms and attach those to your shows. And so if we wanted, for example, for that dinner theater, we wanted to collect additional information from our patrons like dietary restrictions, we can simply create a custom form and attach that to the show and it'll compile all those form answers for us into a report. And under, let me actually skip ahead to the embed widget here. So we have the embed widget. If you want to embed Ludus right into your own website without redirecting them to your Ludus ticketing page, you can use our embed widget. So what we do is we simply give you an embed code. You pop that right into your website and patrons can buy tickets right on your website without ever leaving. And then lastly, in the more drop down here, we have safety. So we do have a number of tools to help you host safe, socially distant shows in person. The number one feature being seat buffering. So we'll jump over to the seat buffering help article over here. So seat buffering allows you to automatically mark seats off for social distancing as patrons buy tickets. So when we're setting up our show, we set the parameters like two seats to the left and right and one seat front and behind. 
And as patrons are buying tickets, it will automatic, automatically create a buffer around their group. So to separate them from other groups. So as you can see here, you can get as crazy as you need to with the social distancing. Arrival times. What we found is that patrons love to show up 10 minutes before curtain crowd into the lobby. The idea of arrival times is to really reduce lobby crowding and control the flow of your patrons. So you can create these arrival times and when patrons are buying tickets, they choose your arrival time and then that arrival time will print on their tickets. So for example, it'll say, please arrive by 645. On your patron policies here, you can enable policies for patrons to agree to when they're buying their tickets. And so we do have a pre-written COVID-19 social contract you can use and edit to your liking. And you can also enable your refund and exchange policy and general policies. Anywhere Seat is our streaming platform. So if you ever have the need to do a, a virtual event like a live stream or a pre-recorded production, you can do that through Anywhere Seat. You can even utilize the hybrid function. So when patrons go to buy their tickets, they can choose between in-person tickets or virtual tickets. And we'll get back to Ludus here. So uh, also under safety here, we do have some additional resources. So if you do run into any COVID situations, we are here to help make that process as easy as possible for you. And then lastly, up here, the question mark icon. So one very important thing to know about Ludus is that we're very, very adamant about great customer support. There's always a human to speak with, whether that's while you're setting things up or day of show. You can contact us via the live chat option here. Give us a phone call or shoot us an email, whatever works for you. On top of that, you also have access to our step-by-step -step guides, help articles, and videos as well. So heading back to the shows page here, uh, what we'll do next is kind of just walk through the show creation process and, and go over what that looks like. I'll show you how easy it is to add in your pricing and set up your performances and then some additional options you can check out before you actually go live with sales. Let's say that we are ready to add in our show. All we have to do is click the add show button and it will bring us through the show creation process. Let's say that we're doing forever plaid and we'll enter our venue information here. We'll type in the address. We can upload a cover graphic to spice up the page a little bit. So I'll just select a graphic from my computer here. Seating type, we can choose between two different types of seating. We can do reserve seating, or we can just do general admission. You simply just type in how many seats you can sell, leave it at that. But for now, let's do reserve seating in our black box setup. If we need social distance seating, we can do that through the seat buffering feature here. So I can choose how many seats I want to uh, create that bubble with. Under retrieval here, there are three different ways that your patrons can go about retrieving their tickets. So they can print their tickets at home using any normal eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. They can receive digital tickets for showing on their mobile device. Or if you have this option enabled, they can mark their tickets for will call. Now, if they mark their tickets for a will call, you simply get a will call list. You go in an hour, 30 minutes before the performance, select all print, and they'll print all those tickets in alphabetical order ready to hand out. We also have refund protection. So essentially what this is, is ticket insurance. And so if a patron is unable to make it due to personal reasons, like their car breaks down or a, fam a close family member gets sick with COVID, they can apply for a refund and get 100% of their money back, but your organization keeps 100% of that money, that, those ticket, that ticket proceeds from that order um, without having to refund it out of your account. Um, this is something that patrons opt into when they're buying their tickets. So they pay 8% um, on top of their order. So like, for example, on a $10 ticket, that would be 80 cents more to protect their ticket. And of course, you can always turn this on and off to your liking. Under additional options here, we can also attach one of those custom forms we built. We can put in patron purchase limits. We can put shows into coming soon mode. So if we wanted to list our entire season, but just have like one available at a time, we can do that. And we can also choose to pass on the fees or absorb the fees. And I'll go into more detail on the pricing toward the end. So we'll click continue here. And now the next thing we're going to do is add in our ticket prices. So what we'll do here is click add ticket price and we'll type in the information. So let's say we have a $20 adult ticket. If we wanna set up tiered pricing, this is how we can match those tickets to those tiered seats. 
And if we need an admin only ticket prices, let's say that we want to charge extra at the door to encourage online sales, we can do that using the admin only process. So it's on, or option. So it's only available to your admin sellers. I'll click done. And we can also add in other ticket types. So let's say we want to do a $10 student ticket. Hit done. We'll hit finish. And the next thing we need to do is add in our show times, our performance dates. So let's say that we're going to do this in February. We'll do February 11. We'll do February 12. And we'll do a Sunday matinee as well. So I'll change the time to 2 o'clock here. Or 1. OK, there we go. And we'll choose a, uh, we'll enter a subtitle if we'd like to include that. I'll click done. And now our show is created. At this point, if we want to go live with sales, we are ready to go live with sales. It's that easy. Of course, there may be some additional options that we want to check out before we do so, before we go live. And so under pricing here, we have add-ons. So add-ons allow you to sell additional items alongside your tickets. So think of merchandise, concessions, shout outs, whatever it may be, you can do so through the add-ons feature. So patrons can add those items on, on top of their ticket order. We also have discounts. So we have a very flexible discount feature that really allows you to set up any sort of discount you need. So for example, let's say I wanted to set up a, a, a discount that gives um, somebody two free tickets, two comp tickets. And so I'll enter Sunny as the uh, discount code because I, I missed the sunshine here in, in Michigan. Um, under tickets limit here, I'll enter two. And so what this will do is when applied at checkout, it'll give them two free tickets. And if they have any remaining tickets in their cart, they, they pay full price for those remaining tickets. So I'll click add discount here. And also we have bulk discounts. So if you do any group sales, like let's say you give 10% off for 20 or more tickets, we can enter that parameter here, add the discount. And so if somebody buys 20 or more tickets, they'll automatically get 10% off their order. Going back to our shows page here under options next to the show, we have triggers. So triggers allows you to turn public online sales on and off at specific times. So if we wanted sales to turn on tomorrow at one, one o'clock in the afternoon, we can set that here and it'll automatically do it for us. And we can also choose how long before or how many hours before curtain we want public online sales to turn off. Heading back to shows here, we also have access codes. So if you do any pre-sales, you can turn enable access codes. So only those with the access code can unlock your show and buy tickets. Messages here as well. So if you have the need to send a mass communication to your ticket holders, if there's a postponement or just something good for them to know, you can do that through the messages feature. It'll send a mass email to all the ticket holders. It'll show you who received the email, who opened it, et cetera. So at this point, let's say we are ready to go live with sales and we want to uh, turn on those public online sales. So what we'll do is we'll choose the on button next to forever plaid. And now online sales are ready to go and patrons can start buying tickets. In this case, let's say that the first sale is somebody comes to the box office in person and wants to buy some tickets. So what we'll do is we'll pull up our admin panel here and they wanna buy tickets to Friday, let's say. So we'll hit new order next to Friday. And this is gonna bring us to the admin selling process. Let's say they wanna select two seats here or we wanna select two seats for them here. We can enter the patient information down here. If you do, if it's day of show and you have a long box office line and you don't have time to collect all this information, you can choose to leave some or all this uh, information blank. Or if they're already in your patron database, you can simply look them up by name or email, select and autofill their information. I'll click add to cart and now we're on the cart page and this is where we can process the sale. Now we have three different payment options by default here as an admin seller, as a box office seller. So we can run a credit card, we can enter the card information. We do sell USB card swipers that you can use to swipe the card or you can use the payment terminal uh, that allows you to do like Apple Pay and Google Pay, tap to pay, things like that. You can do the cash sale here, or you can do a comp sale. You can also add on donations and discount codes. But let's say that the patron hands us 40 bucks in cash. So I'll hit cash here. And now it brings us to the retrieval page where we can retrieve those tickets for the patron. So 
We can print the tickets using any normal eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Or if we have a Boca printer or a thermal printer, we can choose from the thermal printers we have and print direct our tickets directly to our thermal printer. We can send digital tickets to the patron's email or we can mark them later for roll call. <clears throat> Heading back to the shows page, another great way of selling tickets is box office view. One moment. So box office view, is a very fast way of selling tickets. So we recommend using this day of show. So let's say we wanna sell two adult tickets again and we'll sit them here. We click update. I'll move this out of my way really quick, hit cash. And now what just happened is we made a sale within 10 seconds. So it's a very, very fast way of selling tickets. And of course you can always collect patron information in the box office view if needed. So the other side of selling tickets is the patron side. So what it looks like for your patrons to buy tickets. So what we'll do is we'll head over to our patron ticketing portal here. And so here's the patron page. This is what your patrons are going to see when they're buying their tickets. And so they land on the page here. And let's say as a patron, I want tickets to Friday. So I'll hit get tickets next to Friday. And this will bring me through the patron purchase experience. Let's say I want two, two tickets here. And I want one of those tickets to be a student ticket. I do have to enter my patron or my patron information on the public side. So I'll enter my information here. You can also choose to require phone number and address, but in this case, it's not required. I'll click add to cart. And now we're on the cart page. So as you notice, there weren't any passwords or account creations that the patron had to go through. Simply add their tickets to their cart. We can review our cart here. We can add on a donation. We can enable refund protection if we wanna protect our purchase. And then earlier I created that discount code. So to make my order free, I can simply apply that sunny discount code and it makes my order free here. If I did have any remaining tickets in my cart, then I would pay for those remaining tickets. Now in this case, I'll click place your order. Typically the patron is going to enter their card information and upon successful charge, they'll be brought to the confirmation page here where they can retrieve their tickets. This is what a patron ticket looks like uh, when you print at home. So here uh, you can see the map and QR codes and barcodes for scanning. Uh, and there's also room down here for ads and sponsors if you'd like to add those to your tickets. I can send them digitally to my mobile device or I can mark my tickets for will call. If we have will call enabled, I hit will call here. And we'll, if we head back to our admin panel, you now see we have two pickups next to Friday. We can select all, print, and it'll print all those tickets in alphabetical order by order. If you're doing thermal printing through like a Boca, it'll also print the uh, will call cover cards. Don't want that. And so going back to our shows page here, the next thing that is really great to know how to do is how to generate reports and actually keep track of your sales data. So let's say that we want to generate a report for Forever Plaid. What we'll do is we'll hit reports next to forever plaid. And let's say the first one we want to do is a revenue report. So the revenue report is a very straightforward, simple report. It's your day by day, week by week, grand total of your sales broken down. You can also break it down by type of uh, payment method. The orders report is really great because like I said earlier, it's like a spreadsheet in your browser. So you can really dive into your sa sales data. And so here we can sort by column, we can check off different columns and data that we wanna see. We can also group by column so we can really summarize our data here so we can see you know, how many box office sales we have versus self-serve online sales. The tickets report is kind of like the orders report, but instead of grouping by order, it breaks each ticket down. But my favorite report from a financial perspective is the summary report. So this gives us a grand overview of all the sales and breaks it down by different things like payment type, performance state and inventory, price types, channels, and then also our box office sellers. So we can always reconcile for those in-person sales. We can also get an itemized breakdown of the sales. Um, so you can see each individual ticket and all the information about that ticket. Another great thing to know how to do in Ludus is what happens if a patron writes in and wants to exchange their tickets and we allow exchanges. So what we can do is we can simply look up their order and issue an exchange. What I'll do is I'll type in the last name on the order here. 
select the order. So here's that order we just completed online. And we are on the orders details page. So this tells us everything about the order, including how many tickets, how much they paid, if they used a discount code, their contact information, patron information. We can add private notes to their order for internal use. And we can also see all the activity down here. So how they retrieve their tickets, if an exchange ever occurred, if a refund ever occurred, et cetera. In this case, we're gonna do an exchange. So they want to go to Saturday. So we simply select their two tickets, hit exchange. And now this brings us through the exchange process. So what we'll do here is let, they wanna to go to Saturday. So we choose Saturday here and we'll select two new seats for them. Hit continue. We can upgrade or downgrade their tickets if needed. Hit continue. We're gonna confirm everything looks good. Hit confirm exchange. And now what just happened is they received a confirmation email with a link to their updated tickets. And it also kept track of it in the activity log down here. Same similar process for refunds or releases. So if we want to refund this order, we can simply go here, select our tickets, hit refund slash release. And this allows us to refund the money back to the patron's card. We can also release tickets. So if a patron comes to the box office and says, hey, I have this extra ticket, um, you can feel free to resell it. We can go here, we, we can release it, open it back up into the system without refunding the money. We can even mark it as a donation so that patron is listed as a donor in your system. Overall, that is the Ludus product. Um, of course, you know, there are uh, you know, multiple other features that you can check out uh, within these different drop downs here, like the ability to reserve and block off seats from public sale for like reservations um, and a number of other features under settings here like users with the ability to add multiple users at different admin levels. So like full admins, access to everything, can add in shows, make changes, seller accounts, you know, box office sellers who really just need to sell tickets, and then viewer accounts, those who really just need to sell tickets. You also have access to the design tool. So you can customize Ludus in the colors and really make it match your brand. So you can add in your logo, change the colors here, if you're not using the embed widget and you're redirecting patrons to Ludus, you can also use the Splash Page Maker to build a custom landing page for your patrons. It's kind of like a web page builder. So you can drop in photos, maps, videos, whatever it may be to really welcome your patrons to Ludus, to your Ludus page. So the other side of it is pricing, how much Ludus costs and, and the whole pricing model. So what we'll do is we'll jump over to ludus.com and I'll click pricing here. So Pricing on Ludus is very, very straightforward. There are no setup costs. There are no annual fees or hidden charges. The way we make money is when a patron pays using a card. So we pass on a fee to the patron, which by default is 5% plus 25 cents per ticket. And there are no ticket fees on cash comp or $0 tickets. So if somebody hands you 20 bucks in cash in person, that's 20 bucks directly to your program. You don't have to worry about us taking any fees from your proceeds check or deposit for those cash sales. Same thing for those comp sales. And one good thing to know as a CTAM member is that you get a discount on the ticket fees. So every CTAM member gets five cents off per ticket um, of this ticket fee here. So it'd be 5% plus 70 cents per ticket instead of 75 cents per ticket. Using our fee calculator to just better explain how the fees work. For example, on a $10 ticket, the fee is $1.25. The patron, if you're passing the fees on, would pay $11.25. We take this fee, cover credit card processing for you, and send you the full $10. Of course, you can always choose to absorb the fees if needed. But if you choose to pass the fees on to patrons, Ludus ends up being 100% free to your organization. Marketing and embed widget, which I showed earlier, are our two premium options. Everything else is simply included um, in your account. Um, but if you would like to utilize marketing or the embed widget, you can either choose to pay $99 per year, or you can build the price into your ticketing fees and pass it on to the patron. So you can choose to pass on an additional five cents to your patrons for the marketing or the embed widget. And when it comes to actually receiving your funds from Ludus, there are two different ways you can go about doing that. You can receive a direct deposit daily, weekly, or monthly or we can simply just send you one big paper check at the end of your show.
And lastly, over here, heading to the main page of Ludus, setting up a Ludus account and getting started is super easy. There is no lead time by default. It's a no contract service. So if you, you don't have to sign a contract, a lock-in contract. So what you can simply do is go to ludus.com and click the get started today button. And this will walk you through the account creation process. So what you do is you simply enter your account information, your organization's information, and then it'll create an account for you. And it'll walk you through the whole process of setting up a show, choosing your proceeds option, creating a seating chart, et cetera. There'll be a, check or a, a checklist there for you to help get everything set up. We've seen programs sign up and start selling tickets within 30 minutes, um, and we're always there to help. So if you do have any questions along the way, like I said earlier, write into chat or give us a call, shoot us an email, whatever works for you. We're always happy to help. If you'd like more information, you can go to ludus.com. Um, you can you know, look around or how it works page, watch our um, you know, eight minute or six minute video here that kind of goes over what I just went over. Um, it also will cover scanning. So uh, when it comes to actually verifying tickets in person, there are a few different ways you can go about doing that. So you can uh, download the free Ludus Access Control app for iOS and Android, and that uses your phone's camera to scan the tickets and verify them. It also has a, a, a patron check-in list, so you can manually check in your, your patrons via the app. You can also purchase physical barcode scanners that can pair with the app or you can use our web-based scanning tool with the scanning guns um, on any computer like a Chromebook or a laptop at your venue. So what we can do next um, is kind of head into the Q&A and, and I can answer any of the questions that you may have. So let me uh, pull up the Q&A, but Mary Jo, if you wanna lead the way yep, here. I got it up for you, Seth. Perfect, the first perfect. question um, comes from Linda and she's asking if you take the data from their current ticketing system and then can you dump it into there? So do that transport. Yeah, so we can definitely help with that. Um, when it comes to importing patron data, all we need is a spreadsheet to go off of and we can import that right into your um, Luda's account. When it comes to like sales data and ticketing sales data, that's a little trickier because every ticketing system has it a little differently and the shows are in your previous system. But when it comes to patron data, super easy. We can import their name and email address, phone number, and really any other data that you have on the patron. Great. Um, another question. Are you able to show them how to redeem the flex passes or a season mm -hmm. ticket yes. so that they can see how that's done. Absolutely. Let's and the do other it. question on top of that is my question is that mm -hmm. can you do perm seats and flexible seats at the same time? Sorry, could you repeat that question? So like some theaters have like permanent seats, which would okay. be the same seat or like first oh. Friday of, of like a run of yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they also have the flexible package as well. Can you do both of those? Yeah, absolutely. So you can add a mix of your passes. So when you're setting up the pass, you create the, um, the type. So you can definitely have a mix. Um, so you would have those permanent um, season passes that just have all the same tickets, but you can also offer those flex passes um, so people can kind of just choose their seats throughout the season. So yes, absolutely possible. Perfect. And then show them how to redeem those. Sure. Let's do it. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm first just going to generate a pass um, for myself. So as a patron, I can go to um, the ticketing page and buy my gold pass myself. And so I can choose how many I want. Um, but for now, I'll just do it so I don't have to pay $300. Um, so I'll click sell here. And let's say I just want one pass. And so I'll click add to cart. Click checkout. So as an admin, I have this additional information. So I do want to enter the patron information here. So we'll click select. And let's say this is a cash sale here. Make sure I'm just doing everything right. So this is my special passcode. Um, since I entered my information, I should have received a, an email. Here's my pass order confirmation. So this is what the patron's going to see when they buy their pass or you sell them that pass in person. Um, these are customizable too. So if you wanna add like additional information up here, you can do that. But as a patron, I'm gonna click view your pass. And this is gonna bring me to the ticketing page and it's gonna basically log me in as a pass holder. So it's gonna know who I am. And so here's my special passcode. It has instructions on how to redeem. It's really straightforward, but I'll hit get tickets here. 
And Marvelous Wonderettes is what I had attached that pass. So um, let's say I want tickets to Friday here and I want to select some seats. So let's say I want to sit back here. And so I'll select four tickets here. Um, here's an add-on. I love theater and cats. So if I also want a t-shirt, I can add that to my order. So that's what an add-on looks like during the uh, purchase process. And it does know who I am already. So I'll click add to cart. And it says, apply your pass to tickets. So I'll click that. And let's say I want this ticket to be used for all of them. I can click done. Or if I want to mix and match and save some for another show in the future, I can do that. It, that also depends on how you set up the pass. So you can set different types of limits. Let me show you really quick. Um, so if we only want them to be able to get like two tickets per show um, as part of their pass throughout the season, we can do that. But in this case, I just have it so they can just use the tickets how they want to, but you can be a little more strict on how they can actually redeem their tickets. So I'll, re I'll apply it to all my tickets here, click done, it applies the gold pass to those tickets. I place my order and now I just, purchase my tickets as a pass holder and I didn't pay anything because it was part of my pass. Um, so that's what that process looks like. Now, if I land on the ticketing page and I don't go through my email, um, there will be a box that asks you know, for your pass holder code or you can go to the passes page and log in as a pass holder as well. So really it's this code that they just need to know in order to redeem their pass. And it's the same type of setup too, isn't it? For like, um, if a theater wanted to give each actor like two comps, mm -hmm. it would be the same type of setup, wouldn't it? Yeah, I would recommend doing that. Just creating a, um, basically a flex pass for the actors um, and just giving them a, a pass where it gives them um, the two uh, free tickets. Um, otherwise you could also create like a 100% off discount code and they can just apply that at checkout that gives them two free tickets. Great. Um, another question we have coming in, refund protection. Mm -hmm. Patron chooses this or not, question mark. So yes. if they don't pick it, then how does that work? Yeah, good, great question. Um, so it is opt-in. Um, so when they're buying their tickets, they choose to enable um, or apply refund protection to their order. Now, um, if they do run into that situation where they need a refund, they simply just follow the instructions um, in their confirmation email on how to apply for a refund. And um, they just go through that process, apply, supply the information, and then they'll receive that uh, refund back. Now, on for the organization, for the theater, um, how that looks is, you know, if they do have refund protection, then um, that ticket money just stays in the accounts. Now, you also always have the ability to refund, even if they have refund protection, so you can override it. So um, if you have like a show cancellation or something like that, you can override refund protection and refund it. Um, one good thing to know about refund protection is it covers the individual for personal reasons. It doesn't cover like postponements or cancellations, um, but there are processes to help you um, in, any, in any of those situations. Great. Um, when you were talking about the passcode, um, mm -hmm. if they don't have it, they lose it, they can't mm -hmm. find it, or they walk up and they want to buy tickets, how easy is it to be able to find yeah. that? Yeah. So um, I'll use, so we can either search or I'll use your example of being able to do it while we're selling tickets in person. So let's say we are selling tickets in person. So I'll enter the information here. Um, I will apply the information and click add to cart. And so it says enter pass holder code up, code up here. There's a little uh, search icon. So here's that code that we just uh, created or if we need to search it, we can, but I'll hit select, apply and it automatically applies that code so we can choose their tickets. That, that fast. But of course, you know, if they call us up and they're like, I don't know my code, we can simply uh, go to the search bar here. I can type in the information. Um, I can go to passes over here and here's that pass. Um, or I can pull up their patron profile. I have a bunch of different uh, demo accounts here, but we can pull up the, the patron profile and then we can also find it on, on their profile. Right. Can you also do that in that box office mode as well? Uh, yeah, let's check. So I think that is actually one thing that's on our roadmap. Um, so for that, we recommend using um, the, the new order button. Um, but that is, I do know on our to-do list to add a little pass holder box here on the box office view. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, if someone doesn't pick the refund protection, mm -hmm. the theater has the ability to still refund if they yeah. want to? Okay. Yes, and totally... And yep. then the theater loses money? 
or you mean because then it does come out of their account yeah so it's, it's going to work essentially as a normal refund at that point so if you choose to refund the patron and they don't have refund protection so it's just a, a typical normal refund and you allow to refund and you allow that in your policy um, then that would just be taken from the show proceeds at that point um, and of course that's why it's always important to post your policies um, we won't automatically just issue refunds if a patron writes to us we're going to direct them to you and look at your policies and stuff like that so it's really up to the theater if you want to go about uh, doing a refund okay in reporting i know i i always had my ticket um box office people uh do an end of a shift report yeah um is there such a thing that's really quick for them to do end of shift yeah, so what I would recommend doing is doing something like this. Um, so like here's today's sales data. So I just generate a report for today. And this is the sales data just for today. So this is gonna show us all the, um, all the sales data. So the shows that we've sold, um, but down here we can see um, each individual box office seller and their gross and how much they collected in cash, et cetera. Okay, great. Um, if you sell tickets and they're printed, Mm -hmm. then they get exchanged yeah that automatically releases the original tickets correct real time yep as soon as you hit that ex that uh, confirm exchange button the original seats automatically open back up into the system ready for a reseller or now for what seller. happens what happens if they um and i know this happened at grand rapid civic um mm -hmm. they print them at home then they exchange them mm -hmm. um but you don't use a scanner to know who has it does I mean, I guess that's a problem we all face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're not I mean, using scanners, I answered my own question. Then. <laughs> if you're not using scanners, well, then you have to send them to the box office and see who really holds the seat. Yeah, exactly. Or if two people are sitting in the same seat, um, you know somebody has the wrong ticket at that point, and so you can help there too. But yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Whoops! I had to step away. You know, I show. So, Linda, what was the question that you had to? step away from let us know <laughs> she had to step away so i'm not sure linda what question you wanted to know okay um other questions that people may have this has been really informative at least for me it has been really informative right um, about like if sure. you if your theater offers like classes or workshops mm -hmm. um is it would you set that up as a collection thing or yes. a fundraising kind of Absolutely. situation yep yep so you would want to do the collections feature here um, so this, basically you can think of the collections feature as a way to do like registrations and get people registered for things for like classes and stuff like that or workshops. Um, but really you can, you know, utilize it for really anything you can think of. Yep. Any questions? Um, you mentioned streaming a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, sure. How does that work with your ticketing software if someone's streaming? I know some of the, the as we were talking earlier, sometimes you have to use a specific mm -hmm. um, process, but why don't you go over that a little bit because we're some theaters are still streaming quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So um, our streaming product is Anywhere Seat here. So Anywhere Seat um, you know, allows you to do the live streams and then pre-recorded videos, um, or you can link to other events like a Zoom. Um, you sell tickets to these virtual events and each ticket holder receives a unique ticket code that they use to um, enter the event and watch it at the time of the event. Um, so for those live streams, you know, you set the specific time of the stream. The pre-recorded thing is you can do like the on-demand style. So set like a time frame for the videos. Um, when it comes to like rights and the publishing companies, we do not have any um, exclusive partnerships. We have verified partnerships but we do not have exclusive partnerships because we don't believe in those because it's just a pain for everyone. Um, so there are a number of um, uh, publishing companies that allow you to use any uh, streaming platform that you choose. Um, that being said, if you do end up doing a publishing company that forces the, you to use a different streaming platform, you can always still use Ludus for in-person sales. We can even set up your Ludus page to connect to that third-party ticketing platform for virtual tickets. So people can choose their in-person tickets on Ludus, or we can link them directly to the other platform for those virtual sales. Um, when it comes to setting up uh, an event on Anywhere Seat, super easy. Um, so we'll log in here and I, click, I can click add event. Um, so here we can do the live stream, we can enter the event information. 
when it comes to a live stream, we send you like an RTMP key, a stream key to plug into your live stream software. So it broadcasts directly into anywhere seat where your patrons are watching. Um, you can set up different ticket prices or you can do name your own pricing. Uh, you can upload digital uh, programs for patrons to scroll through while they're watching. And you can also enable other things like real-time donations so people can donate while they're watching and live chat um, that appears next to the event. Same similar process for videos. So you just simply upload the video to anywhere seat, just like if you were to upload it to YouTube or uh, Vimeo. Hey, Zach, when it comes to equipment, with some theaters, they may not have um, a lot of equipment, such as, you know, we talked about the yeah. bulk of printers, so they can use a regular mm -hmm. printer. Um, I know I, I can use the ticketing software right off of my laptop. If they don't have the equipment, mm -hmm. though, does Lutus have a way for them to purchase or put them in contact with people? How, how does that work? For yeah, so we have life? a partnership with, with Boca. Um, so if you're looking for like a new thermal printer, for example, um, you can reach out to them, say that you're a Lutus customer and you'll get a, our Lutus discount with Boca. Um, so, you know, they do have a range of different options. I think their lowest one now is about like $550 and then they go up to, you know, $2,000 plus. Um, so we do have that partnership with them. We highly recommend the Bocas. I've been really, really happy with how they print tickets. Um, but we also have the Lutus uh, shop where you can also purchase um, things directly from us. So we do have like our payment terminal. So if you want to do like Google Pay and Apple Pay and tap to pay in person, you can use our terminal. That works over Wi-Fi um, in the internet. So it just connects to your Lutus um, web-based selling tools and communicates directly with Lutus. You can also access the US or buy the USB credit card swiper here. So you can just plug it into a computer and swipe it. And then you can also buy mobile barcode scanners. But one important thing to know about Lutus is none of this is required to actually use Lutus. Um, you don't have to buy a bunch of equipment to actually use Lutus. You can use it. Um, you can choose to use some equipment or no equipment at all. Uh, we have the tools to help in those situations. Yeah, another question about scanners. Um, I know mm -hmm. some people some, some people are using them, some don't. Um, mm -hmm. I was always a non-believer of scanners, <laughs> but um, does it automatically records the seats so that mm -hmm. when you first, as soon as you start your show, you can take a look and actually see who was your no-shows, correct? Yeah, exactly. So what we can do um, is let's say we pull up this list here and we're going to go down to check-in list. So this shows us all the tickets and we can see, okay, um, how many tickets were checked in and not checked in. And then we can go down to this list and we can hide scan tickets to show just the no shows here. Um, so to like show you what that looks like if I check in these tickets, which I can do online. Um, oh, there's a, I got that thing in my way, but I'll just do check in here. And there we go. So you'll see like it shows us how many checked in tickets versus not checked in at that point. Correct. And then you can tell if those people, the individuals call the next day, you know yep. that they didn't check in as Bingo. well. Bingo, yep, exactly. And yep. so if you pull up their profile too, you notice these green check marks. So it tells you when they were checked in and that'll appear on their, on their um, order pages as well. Um, so you'll see like a check mark next to their tickets. So you and know. I don't know how many people are doing this, but your uh, messaging, you can automatically set up messages too. So once the show mm -hmm. is done, they can get an automatic automatic email as well. Thank you yep. for attending. And yep. does that take out, if you're scanning or not scanning, does that, um, well, if you're scanning, does that just take out the no-show people or does it show up for everybody? Um, so in that case, if it was something for after the show for people who attended, then that can be taken out. Yeah. Um, we can help you set that up though. That's like a more of a, you know, customized thing. Um, but that's totally possible within the system. So since we have all that data. Great. Mm -hmm. And if someone's interested, um, mm -hmm. when, before we get done, I don't know if you have your information, you can just put up on the screen again, but how, how, what's the time frame? So let's say, um, I'm like really interested and I want to do this and yeah. I go to your website, I start filling out the information, but what's your average turnaround time so that people can kind of think about, well, we may not be able to do this, but our season in the fall and mm -hmm. how much, how much time, I know it depends too on how much data they have, but what's, what's the average? Yeah, I would say maybe like 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> it's very, it's very fast. Um, so we, uh, Everything is very, very easy. Um, it's self-serve. Um, so you can go here and you can sign up. You can create a free account, just play around with it, get a feel for it. There's no commitment. Um, I mean, I would say that, so we have seen accounts sign up and start selling tickets within 30 minutes. Um, I would say the only time consuming part 
is just building the, the seating chart. So, you know, depending on the size and whatnot, um, but we're always happy to build a chart for you. And that's not something that takes us seven days, two weeks to complete. Just give us a few hours and we'll get the seating chart built for you. Um, so you'll notice uh, speed um, is a, a major factor in Ludus. Um, so you don't have to worry about lead times or planning months in advance to start using Ludus. And then like to, for their data too, if they wanted mm -hmm. if they wanted you to download yeah. all their data from like maybe the past three yeah. years or five years, um, what type of process is that? Yeah, so all we need, just shoot us a, a chat message here or shoot us an email to support at ludus.com, attach your patron information sheet. And we'll take that spreadsheet, we'll just upload it to our server, import it into your account and you're good to go. Wow. Um, are there other questions for that? I mean, this has been a lot of good information. Um, I have to admit, I have been in the Ludus ticketing um, for another for a theater that I'm working with right now. And I have found it to be very easy to use. Um, it has, I and my I wasn't in it, that, that little chat button, he's absolutely right. It was, you know, it was like seven o'clock at night and I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And it was immediate response. There was actually little things that, little uh, other like clues, do you want this, this or this? And it was like, nope, nope, nope. And a person came right on and, and got me to where I was like, oh yes, that's what I need to do. Um, got me right in. So I know it works pretty, pretty easily and pretty self-explanatory, but, um, I want to make sure that we have all of our questions answered. Uh, if anybody is there that has another question or a comment or anything like that, it's been, you know, really enjoyable for me. This is kind of fun. I'm not in ticketing software every day. So to me, it's like, ooh. Hey, Mary Jo. Uh, yeah. This is this is JR. Um, yeah. I just got a comment. Um, I've been using Ludus for about three years now at my theater up in Midland. And uh, yeah, their customer service is top notch. I, I can't, I cannot say that enough for people who are on the fence about this, get this service, use this service. Uh, we recently did a, a dance show that had a live stream and though they, we had issues with it, couldn't get it started on, could not figure out how to get it started. And their chat bubble just typed in, we don't know what we're, we're having trouble with our live stream. It wasn't a, okay, give me a minute. It was, oh, here's your problem. Here's how to fix it. It was, it was within a second of me typing that in. They were already looking at my problem on their side of the thing. So their customer service is, is the best customer service I've ever had. Um, the team that you have, Zach, is, is top notch. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, and Zach, That's the great. question that just came in, yeah. is your life help available 24-7? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so basically how we go about um, our chat is we keep track of when um, shows are going on. So we, we always ensure that there's a human to talk to. Um, if you write, at, write to us at one o'clock in the morning, we probably won't um, respond, but we are available um, throughout the entire day. And we do know when your shows are going on and we're at, there at the times that matter, um, which is in the mornings when you're waking up and trying to figure things out. Um, and also, you know, late at night or five minutes um, before your show, there, there is going to be a, a human to speak with. Beautiful. Well, folks, I think this is really great. I think if you're looking for a new ticketing software, I think you need to, to keep Ludus in mind. And remember, as a CTAM uh, member, you do get the added discount. And I just want to make everybody's set and I want to thank Zach one more time and um, he'll stick around for a couple minutes but um, I want to thank everybody for joining us we will have another uh, webinar again in February so watch our social media because we will be posting that we're also going down the road again yes folks CTM is going down the road we have um, an on the road series in March April and May if you don't know what that is that means we are bringing a conference to an area near you so there'll be workshops and information coming. Please watch our social media, um, our call board for articles that are coming up to let you know where we're going and who our presenters are. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you at On the Road or in February for a webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Mm -hmm.